Cinderella, Chapter 1, which introduces us to Cinderella and her unpleasant sisters. There lived, so the storybooks say, long ago. I can't tell you where, for I really don't know. A sweet little maiden whose father and mother on quitting this troublesome world for another had entrusted their small baby girl to the care of her only relations, an ill-tempered pair of grown-up stepsisters mm -hmm. whose conduct, you'll see, was not at all what sisters' conduct should be. When this poor little girl was sufficiently old to work as a servant, these sisters were told, in spite of their promises, treated her ill, compelling her daily to slave at their will, and all by herself in the kitchen to stay, with no other company day after day, but the mice and black beetles which came in her way in the cold winter mornings with snow on the ground. While snug in their beds, her two sisters slept sound, all cozy and warm. The poor girl, you must know, had to rise before daylight and hasten below, like the fires, make cups of tea warm and sweet, and hot buttered toast for these creatures to eat as soon as they woke, for I need scarcely state. The lazy things never got up until late, while the child had to labor from morning till night, amid blows and harsh words. Though she strove to do right, she was charmingly sweet, with eyes of soft blue, a sweet winning smile, and a nice figure too. Her teeth were small pearls, she had lovely hair fair, her Chinders left marks on a face that could scarcely be seen, since a lovely complexion's no use if not clean, and she no time to keep herself neat, nor could you if you did all the dirty work she had to do. Then the grace of her figure was scarce, since a bit, for the dresses that gave her to wear didn't fit. These sisters thought new ones a great deal too good. She must alter their old ones the best way she could, which was no easy task, for one sister was tall, like a maypole, the other as round as a ball. So whenever she had a few moments to spare, these clothes must be altered and made fit to wear. The thin sister's garments she had to let out, and taking the gowns which belong to the stout, and altering parts I know nothing about. She worked at her best, but it must be confessed, in spite of her pains, she was shabbily dressed. I have never been told what her proper name was. Cinderella, her stepsister called her, because, because, because then they'd strum the piano and twang the guitar and sing till their quails could be heard from afar. Because, because, she sometimes would rest after toiling till late, never the chimney, and sit with her feet on the gate. And while Cinderella would wash, scrub, and mend, her sisters upstairs many hours would spend reading novels, all trash from beginning to end, or try to paint pictures. Such dabs that were they were. They really would make a cat laugh, I declare, an expression by no means uncommon. Tess is true, but a thing which I can't say I've seen a cat do. Save in Alice's Wonderland story, wherein there is a large Chestershire cat with the wonderful grin. Then they had strum the piano and twang the guitar and sing till their quails could be heard from afar. For they each had a voice sharp and harsh as a crow, with a screech in the high notes, a grunt in the low, and the music would give one a colic attack. 
or the creeps from one's toes to the small of one's back. They wanted rich husbands and used to invite their friends to take tea with them night after night, each hoping some gallant who owned a long purse would be willing to take her for better or worse. I should say not for better, but quite the reverse. But none of the men seemed inclined to be caught, and the sisters displayed their fine graces for naught, while poor Cinderella sat lonely and sad. In the cruel jury kitchen, Tiss was really too bad, but she didn't complain. And for many a day, she passed her young life in this unpleasant way. While poor Cinderella sat lonely and sad in the cold jewelry kitchen, twas really too bad. End of chapter one.